Lately, I've become obsessed with the American Impressionist of the early 20th century and the associated gardening movement and plein air painting movement that go along with the American Impressionists. And this particular one is John Singer Sargent. Now, he was really an expatriate. This is his Paris studio where he did the portraits of a lot of Americans that would go on grand tour because he was English speaking and they had that in common. Here's a picture of him at Iron Bound Island um, off of Maine, which was the home of Dwight Blaney, who was also an artist and architect, who invited him there to paint for the summer. Dwight was married to Edith, who was heiress to the Eastern Steamship Company. In fact, here's a painting by her that was done by Child Hassam, and you'll notice that book in her hand. We'll talk about that later. Here is their house on Ironbound Island. And to get an idea of where it is, it's between Bar Harbor and Winter Harbor, Maine. They loved painting outside. Here they are in the garden, and here he is on their yacht, the Iona. Now this painting is one that Sargent did of their family. There's Dwight and his wife, Edith, and their two daughters. But I want you to look really closely at the close-ups of the painting, and we're going to see that um, Sargent would lay down his concept in pencil. Can you see the pencil marks under there? Before he laid in any color or detail. And so I'm going to use this same style to do my watercolor today. And because of the gardening movement, I want to do my painting of a garden I went to this week at Cheekwood. And I started by first laying in, in pencil, that basic concept. And I just wanted to give myself kind of a road map to know where I was going to lay in the color. Now, just like Sargent, we're going to be laying in with... Um, watercolor on top of this. Now the painting itself is rather small. It's only five by seven. So it's going to require smaller brushes. And I always paint small in watercolor. I don't know why. I guess because I'm generally traveling with it or in some way needing it to be lightweight and easy to carry. And it's just, and you also have to pre-prepare your paper by wetting it and stretching it and letting it dry and you do that by blocking it on a piece of wood. Now I've got a big piece of wood but it's chunky and it's heavy and it's not easy to transport. So what I've got here is just a piece of um, masonite that's got whiteboard on one side of it and they come in four by eight sheets but I had these cut down into 12 by 12 sheets just to make them easier to carry. And so my paintings are always smaller than 12 by 12. And I pick the color of the sky. I usually start as far back as possible and come forward. And we go ahead and lay in that color, especially where the um, sky holes are in the trees. So it's just not the sky itself, but we're going to go into those sky holes as well. That's what makes those trees look more realistic. Now, if you look at the sky, it's going to be darker and cooler at the zenith and warmer and lighter down at the horizon. Now, watercolor dries lighter, but you want to start as light as possible and you can come back and add extra layers if you want to go darker. I always say it's like when you wash your hair. Um, you know, you may be blonde when your hair is dry, but when you come out of the shower and it's wet, it looks a lot darker. So it's kind of like the same with watercolor. Much darker when it's wet, much lighter when it dries. So what I love about these watercolor sets, and these are both travel watercolor sets, and you can get them even smaller than this. Of course, I've got two out here just for the variety of color. Is that that little lid acts as a palette. So it's very compact, very lightweight, very easy to travel with. Um, I can't imagine, you know, packing up 60 pounds worth of oils and, and all the accoutrements that go with plein air painting, um, unless I've got, you know, a car or a wagon or something to carry everything in. It can get so heavy. It's just so much easier with watercolor. 
So we went from the sky plane down to the um, ground plane, and we're putting in several different greens here. Um, it's warmer and lighter in some areas. It's more vibrant in other areas. We're going to put some darks here in a minute where there's some uh, shadows falling, but you never want to have just a, a flat one color. We always want to go with um, more gradation in color. Now with watercolor, you have to keep in mind, do I want it to blend? Then it needs to be wet when I'm laying it on there, wet on wet. If I don't want it to blend, then I'm going to have to wait for that to dry and I'm either going to have to take a break or I'm going to have to move into a different area of the uh, painting. If you're interested in learning more about painting landscapes, I highly recommend uh, John Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. It's a book that he wrote, I believe, in the late 1920s, and it's the first reference I've ever heard of the um, sky holes concept. But it's basically the Bible to plain air painters, and, and I do highly recommend that. It's been out for so long now that you can pick it up um, secondhand for 5 or $10. Very, very economical and um, one you'll want in your library. Earlier in this video, I showed a picture of Edith Blaney and told you to notice the book in her hand. It's actually an 1894 copy of An Island Garden by her friend Celia Thatcher. And that book has actually been reprinted in the last uh, 20 years, and I have a copy. And highly recommend it. It's about Celia Thatcher's home on Appledore Island in Maine and the artist that came there to paint in her garden. Child Hassam was their friend. He painted this portrait of Edith on Ironbound Island, but he was also commissioned to do the illustrations for Celia's book. This is another painting he did on Ironbound. And here are some paintings by John Singer Sargent on Ironbound. That one's of Dwight Blaney in The Wharf. This one's by Blaney himself. I mentioned he was a painter as well as an architect. And of course he lived there in the summer, so he's got more paintings from Ironbound than the other painters. And then this is the one that uh, John Singer Sargent did of Blaney. It's so beautiful.